You guys have coffees? No, sir, I have eggnog. Yeah, that looks like pure eggnog. You stole somebody's eggnog? No, this is from the potluck. Oh, shit. It's I don't think I've ever eggnog. had eggnog. Lactose-free eggnog? Mm -hmm. It's no dairy. You've never had eggnog? No. Somebody that loves food, you've never had eggnog? It's like a Jew-Christian thing? Like, it just was never around? Take a sip! This is his first time ever to I mean, I'm eggnog. sorry it's lactose-free. It's mm. not gonna be the real I'm deal. I'm lactose intolerant. It so. just honestly tastes like... Oh, I'm really interested. ...melted vanilla ice it's cream. It's creamy goodness. It's like crazy good. Did your life just change? Holy fucking shit. Here's man. the problem with eggnog these days. That's it's so, so hard good. to find the good, like just normal eggnog because yeah. it got all these stupid like pumpkin eggnog and yeah. uh, caramel eggnog. All fucking of lactose free and fucking, <laughs> what's that shit? Glucose free and. Dude, you're absolutely right. It tastes like melted vanilla ice it's cream. Really... People have just but been that's... doing this their entire oh, lives. Yeah. It gets better. You can put alcohol in it. How are we not fucking fat? Oh, well, we do are, put I guess. Booze in it. People put Jesus. Booze in it. Well, of course you would. That rum chata. Put some rum chata in there. My guys, dad, uh, speaking of eggnog, this episode is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. If you ever need to wipe your whiskers off your face because they catch all the eggnog in, in them and you don't want that to happen, maybe you should shave it off with Dollar oh, no, Shave Club. No, we got a better segue, remember? Uh, eggnog is like December because it's the holidays and it's no longer November, so all you people with beards, Take them off. Let me the month let me of try that. Hey, because yeah. it's not n November anymore. You should shave because it's uh, eggnog in a dollar shave club. Uh, also, you gotta know when to shave them. Know when to save them. Shave off your beard and mustache <laughs> using Dollar Shave Club. DollarShaveClub.com slash SFNerd if you want all the stuff in the. Seriously, his mind is blown by eggnog. It's so good. Don't you touch my eggnog, girl. I can't believe you've never I'm had eggnog before. I'm gonna that cut blows my you mind. open. I'm gonna drink it out of you. Ooh, Damn. it's gonna have bile and like salad in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Do <laughs> All right, let's take it. Back. <laughs> no, 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 do that natural transition again. <laughs> do that. Mm. All right, let's. Uh... No, <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Colin. <laughs> Damn it, Gene. <laughs> I hate wasp. Let's do this. <laughs> let's get a topic out of a bowl, please. Man, that's the second time I bit my cheek today. Oh. I hate doing that, man. And then you bite it, and then you, mm -hmm. have, you keep biting it because yeah. it swells. Because it swells, and it's yeah. just bigger, and you're just toying and with it. I haven't it, but taken just my wisdom worse. teeth out yet, so it's like even worse. Joe, I gotta do that you soon, still haven't Joe. gotten your wisdom. Same here. Mm -hmm. I have what? all four of them. Guys, yeah. you're supposed to do that ten years you ago. You didn't have eggnog! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Linear Cat writes on Reddit, What phrase or motto do you live by? Mine is, don't do anything you wouldn't want to explain to a nurse. Mine oh. is, uh, laughter cures everything. Hmm. A lot Including of people cancer. would die under your watch. <laughs> a lot of people would Patch die. Patch Adams, if anything, proved yeah. that it cures everything. But look, we're all gonna die someday, so, you know, God forbid, you know, I might have some sort of terrible disease mm. growing in me or some horrible way that I'm gonna die. And I'll still, I'll still, I mean, even though it's scary to think about dying, I'll still be laughing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I say that now, but mm -hmm. I love jokes so much, I couldn't imagine my life without it. Yeah. Mine is, if you can't eat it, and you can't fuck it, fuck it. Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Mom? <laughs> uh, I've always kind of done the, uh, I, I've never had an official phrase that I live by. I didn't have a motto, didn't have a mantra, but I, I think the last 10 years I've been telling people and telling myself in those, those quiet existential moments where I actually get to self-reflect to just do. Not do it, not Nike, but just do. You can think about how you're, you're gonna change your life, you can think about the next steps, but unless you actually take a foot place it forward, mm. you're gonna be stationary. And when you're stationary, when you're not being active in living your life, you can become complacent, and then life lives for you and you don't live for life, so just do. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's actually, that's so weird. You guys both took it seriously and I did the fucking bullshit one for <laughs> once. Well, I mean, mine still in involves laughter. Yeah, but like serious laughter. But I mean, there is no such thing as serious I feel laughter. like you do have a mantra, mm -hmm. Matt. What is it? Um. Yeah, if I if I had to have a mantra, it was it was it's just love yourself, love That's yourself, because no one else is gonna do it. And it's really hard to do sometimes. It's really really hard, and it's a decision you have to make every day. Like yep. making being happy is a decision. Depression, I think, is natural. Being happy is unnatural, and it's like you have to force yourself to get into the habit 
of being happy. Also, don't be afraid to say uh, to your partner that whatever they're doing in the bedroom is not working. Yeah. Be <laughs> sure to tell them and communicate with them. That makes for a better love life. Yeah, if they don't know how to kiss, you need to teach them how to kiss. Their mouth shouldn't be that wide open. You fall in. Yeah, and if they're being real rough down there, just tell them they're being rough. I yeah. remember my parents gave me this advice when I was three. Yeah, used it ever since. Could yeah. you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> hey, son, yeah. listen. Look, <laughs> sometimes in the bed space, your mother just ain't doing it. <laughs> what do you? What do you mean, Dad? What do you, what's the bed space? Well, that's where we. Well, our, look, I'm talking about sex, son. What is? You're three, right? You should have known about this for a while. Am I? Was I supposed to know about this? I feel like I'm Tracy! just in the hang of catch. Tracy. Yes. Do we talk to Matt about sex yet? I don't think so. Shit. Are you guys fighting? <laughs> I just want to go to school. I want to get a dinosaur for Christmas. By the way, you're a little rough with my pussy in the bedroom. I respect that. <laughs> I'm glad that you talked to me about it instead of holding it over my head. I have so many questions. Like, what is a cat doing in the bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Kindle on Reddit asks, besides family members, who's been the most influential person in your life? Oh, man. What's up Oh, today? dude. Jim Henson, Andy Kaufman, Chris Farley, Jim Carrey. What about non-celebrity based, like your neighbor John? Yeah. Well, my neighbor John was a real or shit. Or like a teacher, or a, or, or or do you find? And, the... I had a teacher at a uh, Catholic school. Her name was Mrs. Kindred, and she was very mm -hmm. she was very uh, awesome and creative and funny, and she embraced the weirdness. She, of, she, of she all taught the outside of the box She's, a bit. She taught outside of the box, and luckily I had another one too named Mrs. Burke, and she was actually like this hippie. And she like had the like Volkswagen van and oh, like, really? yeah, and she <laughs> totally wasn't Catholic, which was like the crazy part because I mean like not being Catholic in a Catholic school is probably kind of terrifying. Mm -hmm. And I heard actually later on she was let go because of that and because her oh, beliefs yeah. did not reflect the schools. Ah, that's a but bummer. super creative, hmm. very artistic. She taught me some of the most amazing, like you know, artistic and and just kind of like amazing life kind of things as a kid. Oh. Yeah. Sweet. Did you have a crush on her? No, not really. Mm. She had a missing finger, which was kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> you just do the permanent Man. shocker? Is that what you just Pretty do? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, could do some good shading with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good finger Some good, some good scratching, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah get, get those <laughs> shadows in there. <laughs> so other than parents, mm -hmm. what other influences do I? I had a bunch of teachers, too, that I, that I yeah. looked up to. Girl. Oh! oh! That I the looked range up to. was right. Um, yeah, yeah, a couple in college. It's a lot of teacher, like yeah. coaches, stuff like that. A couple friends. No specifics. No specifics. <laughs> For me, it was uh, Mr. my filmmaking teacher in high school. We were lucky enough to have like wow, a small that's film a, program. That, that's wow. fortunate. Yeah, a lot of schools. Like our school, our school didn't have a ton of money, but like we had like random arts programs that have just been slowly getting slashed ever mm. since. And we actually got to get our hands on Super 8 film oh, and like cool. make little movies and stuff like That's that. Cool. His name was Mr. G, Mr. G Gavrilovich. And he had a ponytail and he wore a suit every day. And he was the first person of authority who was just kind of like, fuck the man. Really? Oh, <laughs> cool. Yeah. He's like, no. Is it because like, his screenplay didn't get purchased by He was like, a, no, he's like a documentary <laughs> filmmaker okay. and whatever. And he would just show us R rated movies. He didn't give a shit. Cool. He was like, you know, the administration, fuck them. We're just doing our own thing. Yeah. And he was the first person I like showed my writing to. Like, I started writing screenplays in high school. And he like was he like, trusted he him. was like, you know, these actually don't suck. Like, Aww. you should keep doing this. Um, so it was like the first time an adult was like, hey, don't trust everybody, you are okay, keep doing yeah, what you want to do. That's, that's cool. I think yeah. everybody comes across, because I had one too, Mr. Christensen was the, he was super smart, intimidated the hell out of me, mm -hmm. but he definitely had that like, screw the administration, because all these schools have a certain way that they try to force their teachers to teach. And, yeah. And yeah. It's very the hard curriculum. for a lot of people. The curriculum can really... F mm -hmm. teachers in their ways and the way that they, they speak and connect with their students. Sure. But he was definitely one that was just like, I'm doing it my way. Uh, I 100% believe it's right. And fuck everybody else that doesn't think so. And mm -hmm. it, it's refreshing when you get a teacher like that. Whether or not they're right or whether or not they're wrong, it doesn't matter. It's nice to have somebody that like is passionate enough about mm -hmm. what they're doing and not just going through the motions. Because there's so many apathetic teachers. Like the first time you actually get a hit of real passion, uh -huh. It wakes you up. And it feels good, but I also don't blame teachers. I don't think a lot of those people go into the profession thinking, 
I don't want to do this. They all do stuff. I think stuff, it have to be passionate but then about it. it yeah. It's just like when you get into an, any almost any job, something mm -hmm. that you thought you wanted to do for your whole life. You find out there's all this red tape and all these stupid rules that don't make sense because there's a bunch of people in the process that got to feel like they're important, mm -hmm. muddying things up. So it's it's refreshing when you come across an educator that still gives a, a crap about mm -hmm. educating. And in a, spite yeah. of all yeah. that shit. Yeah. Had and a couple they're amazing in high school, people, had a couple in, in college. Yeah. 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 The, the good teachers are amazing, amazing people. I can't even imagine what that would be like with all those things in the way and with just that passion to teach and then not being able to express yourself. That's got to be terrible. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you're doing it to all these kids that you're going to have trouble connecting with anyways. And then you yeah. have all these other hurdles that you got to jump over to mm -hmm. try and connect with them. And then you got to connect with them with what the superintendent says. And yeah. kids are Sounds just like dicks. Hell. Kids yeah. are huge dicks. Ugh. Yep. But you know you can break through and yeah. get to them if the school will just How let you do it. How am I going to reach uh, these kids? Guys, you guys remember that movie Stand and Deliver? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the movie's awesome. <laughs> what about Dangerous Minds? Remember that yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about all those movies that what are about, the same uh, movie? Oh, that movie uh, Freedom Riders? You remember that movie? No. No. You remember High School High with John Lovitz? Yeah, I do remember no. that movie. was great. Yeah. I haven't seen it recently, but I watched it as a kid and I loved it. Crisis. Siren, uh, I see, I think C I R E. Siren. Siren. Uh, asks, what was an item of clothing, a CD, or something else you owned as a teenager that your parents hated? Oh man, oh. I, <laughs> okay, I had two shirts that ended up disappearing. Oh. <laughs> uh, disappearing. Mm -hmm. she mommy. And I think I talked about the first one, I've, and these were, well actually one of them was thrift store found, and then one of them I actually bought online. So the first one um, was just a black shirt, big white letters said "Big Nipples Rule" on it, <laughs> <laughs> and I loved that shirt, and it disappeared. Mom, I know what you did. And then I had this other shirt that was from a Mr. Show sketch, and it's a band called Wicked Scepter. Oh wow! And it, they made shirts. They that? made shirts. Yeah, it was a very limited run, and they uh, and so Wicked Scepter was a band that was like completely homoerotic <laughs> and and um, I can't remember what their hit song was called but on the on the front of the t-shirt it had the whole band in a hot tub and David Cross's character had his arms up like this and there was a guy totally blowing <laughs> in <his hot> tub. <laughs> and on the back it was like the suck my weenus tour or something oh, like that no. and it was like the fucking coolest shirt and I loved it, it was um, just think of how obscure that shit is, and mm -hmm. it just disappeared. Mm -hmm. I, and it's funny because you couldn't quite tell what was <laughs> happening on the t-shirt, and so my, I had it for a while before my parents realized something was off. Hmm. So I think they like realized that it was definitely a dude getting blown on my t-shirt, <laughs> yeah. and then they, they got rid of it. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that was a great shirt. For me, it's also <laughs> two t-shirts. Uh, one, like you know that phase when you're like 11 or 12 and you're just starting to figure out what your sense of humor mm -hmm. is, and you mm -hmm. want to start expressing it through clothes? Uh -huh. The first thing I ever bought that was sort of like, maybe this is funny, but it really wasn't, was like this dumb shirt that said, don't make me get my flying monkeys. <laughs> Don't make me get so my. Sounds like you're a witch. Like you're I wicked. guess I'm like a wicked witch or something. Sure. You're a and, bad person. But the whole yeah. thing that that shirt set off in my head was like, it must be so fucking easy to make shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sat in my room coming up with ideas for shirts. And one of them was like, it was like a cat on like a bench press, and it was like, gotta hit the gym if you want to hit anything else. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That was a, Why isn't it that? <laughs> I don't know. There's no play on words. <laughs> Well, the play, well, I was, was that just an abusive No, the, no, the play on words no, is like, you gotta like, hit you, the gym. If you wanna you hit wanna it. hit anything if else. If you wanna hit it. But it's, oh, hit. Oh, okay, so that. I saw it as an abuse thing too. I first. thought it was just an angry cat. <laughs> no, I was, like, when I was twelve. I was on like, HGH yeah. If running don't around make me get cat. my flying monkeys could be a shirt. That could definitely be. I a shirt. I think a better shirt. Can I modify it a little yeah. bit? It would be the cat working out and said, "You gotta hit the gym if you want to hit that pussy." That's exactly right. That's, That's what it would have been. But I was not bold enough to say pussy when sure. I was twelve. Right. The other shirt, I would have called it pumping pussy. Pumping. That's pussy. great. Pumping <laughs> pussy. Great. You're fucking. Go make that shirt. It's Ew. yours now. I'm sorry, pal. My friend had a shirt that had two safes fucking each other, and it said oh. safe sex. 
funny. Um, <laughs> my my other one was just like it was a Venom shirt, like from Spider Man, and it was just a black shirt. My mom had this His thing. Big ass tongue sticking out. No, it was just just the symbol. Oh. Okay. But I was like, my mom had always said. Don't wear black t-shirts. Don't wear black shirts. You shouldn't wear black. It's like, it's an angsty color. It's like, it's not you. It's a reflection upon my parenting skills. Exactly. Please do not wear black. So, yeah. Don't oh, embarrass me. When I finally had money to buy my own shirts, I bought a Venom <laughs> shirt. Uh, uh, and for the first, I, I would wear it, and for the first time, people looked at me differently. Like, people oh. had always like just kind of looked at me, oh, it's like fucking innocuous, hey, who's white this rebel over here but with a black shirt? Yeah, exactly, people would look at me like, like people would, my, he's I, angsty. I remember once I was in a I was in a party city and an employee followed me around, and I was Whoa. like, "This is what it's like to be like one of the bad kids." Whoa. Oh my god! And uh, I never wore it again because I just didn't want people to treat me That's like I was so bad. Weird. I think it's uh, I think it's Teen Wolf that has like one of the greatest T-shirts I've ever seen in movies. Is it the friend? It's his friend, and he's and Styles. He, Styles. No. It might have been Styles. Is his name Styles? I forget. I don't, I don't know. know, but. He had a shirt and it said, what are you looking at, dick nose? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great I know, shirt. what are you looking at, dick nose? I knows. love that movie. I know, oh, it's, it's so good, good. cuz it's like yeah. dramatic too. Bill yeah. Simmons, uh, he's a sports writing guy, he's one of like the biggest podcasters out there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But he's smart, he does about a bunch of pop culture stuff. He is obsessed with that movie and he's went in and like tallied up the stats of what like everybody's final point totals Wait, and from all the basketball games? Wait, so you can add them into like a fan so yeah, he's just went through and <laughs> yeah. he's just statted out everything. That's it's, crazy. It's hilarious. What are, what are Team Wolf's stats? Do you I know? forget, but they he must had be a very good charts. game. But wait, can I, just, can I quickly though? I saw this sketch at I.O. like a couple weeks ago that makes me laugh still, and it's someone pitching the movie Teen Wolf. But it's, oh, no. but it's before he says it's a wolf, so he's like, okay, I got this movie idea, okay. and it's about this teenager mm -hmm. who discovers that at every full moon, mm -hmm. He turns into a black guy. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no! 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 But it's okay. It's okay. He becomes really good at sports. Like he just oh. becomes crazy good at basketball. And no! 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 Don't, just hold on. Hold on. He like becomes a great dancer, and everyone wants to hang out okay. with him. Uh, you know, and like just you know because he's a because he's a black guy. I don't think we're in the no, right no, no, no 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 no. Just hold on one more one more. Uh, all, this the, the most popular like hot blonde chick in school totally wants to fuck him. Like not. Not a relationship though. She sees him as a sexual object and she would only want to fuck him while he's a black guy. The social climate of, of, of America right now, I don't really think, <laughs> I don't think a movie's gonna- I feel like you guys are getting hung up on like one small detail of uh, fuck it. What if he just, he turns into a wolf instead? Make the movie! <laughs> <laughs> that's a great bit. But that's like, isn't that so fucking true It's really though? good, it's really good. Oh shit. Yeah. It blew my mind. Yeah. I'd never considered it. Uh huh. Hmm. You know that came out the same year as Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah, it he did. was like he was working on it at the same he time. He blew up. That was like the. Well, that was he was doing Family Ties during the day, shooting Back to the Future at night, and then he moved mm -hmm. right on to Team Wolf. You know what's another cool movie T-shirt, really quick? In uh, uh, Monster Squad, the uh, main kid he wears a shirt that says Stephen King rules on it. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. And he wears it like throughout the whole movie. Greatest shirt ever. One. Of I wish that movie held up. I have it at home. I bought you don't it. Like it. I anymore? bought it recently. I still yeah. like it. I still yeah. like it. I still it. like it, but it's bad. Yeah. It's bad, but it's like Stan Winston monsters. <laughs> oh, I know it's great. Yeah. And the looking. monsters are fucking dude, the Gill Man the is one of the yeah. coolest the looking. The difference between yeah. that movie and Goonies, which I think are kind of in the same boat, they are just slightly different genres. Yeah. Well, it's the Spielberg. kids were great actors in movies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the they're kids bad. are real, <laughs> they're real bad. bad. They're not great. Real but, bad. Uh, what, what's the part? It's like at the very oh yeah, like Dracula calls like a six year old girl a bitch. Yes, oh, it's yeah. at the end. It's that's like, like real the best aggressive. part of the movie. Yeah. I mean, Other than like Wolfman like, has nards. But that movie's intense, man. Yeah. I remember when the kid who was like the cool kid, mm -hmm. like he didn't want to join their group or Styles? whatever. Styles. <laughs> <laughs> Styles. No, he had like the fucking crossbow, yeah. and he's like taking out. The vampire girl. It's yeah. dark. It's really it's a dark. Really dark, dark movie. movie. Yeah, like people die. But then it's like, well, there's no spoilers in this movie. Yeah. Van Helsing comes out of effing nowhere. nowhere. Yeah. It's like he's Dracula's like, right here. Cut to some kid's reaction. Cut back, and it's like he's got him in a headlock, it's pulling like, him back. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> this old guy. I'm Van Helsing. But but I think they talk about 
there's one scene in the movie where they talk about how like it's that German guy and yeah. he's like Van Helsing. The old German guy. Yeah, he's like Van Helsing was taken into the the limbo mm. or whatever and he's stuck there forever. Yeah. And so it's kind of like a call a throwback know, to that. Right, but you're right. right. It would have been cooler if it was like. Yeah. But it's so sad because Frankenstein goes in there. <laughs> yeah. And he's like goodbye. <laughs> and he's floating back into the vortex <laughs> and the little girl's hanging on. And he's yeah. like no. It's a great movie. I need to watch that again. It's good. That. I mean, it's bad. And it's it doesn't good. like hold up the way you want it to, but yep. neither does Goonies. And wait, there's that. Oh, I know. Go- oh, I gotta I think say, Goonies does hold up. I gotta the say, the first act of Goonies is boring. Here's the nah, thing: the worst part about Goonies, you get to know the kids, and I think this is a Richard Donner thing. The worst part about Goonies is the overlapping oh, dialogue. They just let, it's like yeah. a table talk. It's like a table talk. It is just like a table talk. It's madness. It's absolute madness. You can't hear everything. Remember that song in Monster Squad where it's like, rock until you drop, <laughs> rock until your I head rem- falls out. I do not remember this. And then it was like, rock until your heart stops. And like this, you listen to the lyrics of that song and you're like, you're basically saying dance until you die. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is fucking terrifying. Uh, quick note before we, we wrap up. I also watched The Burbs this oh! weekend. Burbs is amazing. Fucking Amazing. The Burbs is great. I've the thing about the, what Burbs? Is the Burbs, the Burbs the is one of the fucking greatest comedies it's slash dark oddball it's movies weird. of all time. No, kids haven't seen the, the, thing the, Burbs, about the Burbs. Watch the Burbs. That gets to me, and this is for real, no spoilers. Is that there is no twist at the ending. No, it was like the whole it's time. Everything <laughs> yeah. that you expect to happen yeah. happens. Yeah. But it's a good movie. But the point that I was going to make. Don't spoil it. Goonies, it's so good. Burbs, uh, um, 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 uh, Lost even, Boys. Like, Lost Corey, Boys. Corey Feldman. Yeah. Oh, Corey Feldman was. Top three, was, top three yeah. child yeah. actor ever. Yeah. Yeah. He was so good. Yeah. yeah. His presence on film from age six to age 17. Yeah. Unparalleled. Yeah, you just we, wanted to be him. Can we talk about you. the Lost Boys? For no, let's talk about the Burbs. Joe Dante. We can't. We're not scored by Jerry to. Goldsmith. We're, We're not, not allowed, allowed to because we can't spoil it. Guys, he hasn't seen it. Fucking Bruce Dern. It's so good. Bruce, Bruce Dern is the shit. Bruce Dern is the shit. Stop it. Whatever happened to that guy? Rick Duckerman? Yeah, whatever happened to Rick? He, he was, was like the funny fat one guy. of the so greatest he, actor names I've ever heard. Yeah. Rick Duckerman. He was in Gremlins 2. So he was, he was 80s other, funny fat guy. He was 80s funny fat guy. He was in Gremlins 2, and then he just disappeared off the face. Yeah, there. where'd he go? I don't know, but he was great. He had good timing. He yeah. was funny. Yeah. He's oh my good. god, Corey Feldman. Oh, I fucking love the burbs. It's so good. He's in the burbs too? Yeah. yeah. He's in everything. I love when the guy's like, he's like, no! And the guy's like, whoa, <laughs> hey man, it's about 10 on the tension scale. <laughs> I'm fucking loving it. It's Lost so Boys is great, though. Lost, Lost Boys is great. Also holds great. up. Yes. Also Best part of Lost well. Boys is the fucking scene at the pier with the fucking oiled up guy. Yeah, with the sexy sax man. I still believe. <laughs> 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 and the fucking yeah. gyrations. <laughs> And it's Best like when ever. Alex Winter dies, it's like it's like a representation of his acting career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love uh, Have you ver- seen his Napster documentary? He directed oh, this no. documentary about Napster. It's actually really good. He also directed the Smosh movie that's coming out. No oh, really? shit. Yeah, that's Alex hilarious. Winter. I, I just gave Alex Winter shit, and that's not fair because when I see Alex Winter on film, uh, he's another one that I loved as a kid. No, Alex Winter's yeah. great. In great fact, in Bill and um, Ted's. Great in. Like, he's just had presence, too. But yeah. then he disappeared. Right. Well, no. Wasn't he, di- he, he directed Newsies a lot of stuff. Too? Was he in no. 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 But he, di- he directed a lot. He went off to become a director. Mm-hmm. And actually, a friend of mine, Tom Stern, who directed Freaks. You know that movie Freaks with... Um, with uh, or is it called Freaks? No, Freaks. You're thinking is the, yeah, the, the 1930s. 1930s. No, no, no. Movie. There's this one that's called like I think it's called Freaks, but it's got like uh, Dennis Quaid or uh, fucking who's the guy from Christmas Vacation? Wait, wait, Vacation? wait. You mean eight-legged Freaks? No, no. Who's the guy from Christmas Vacation? Randy the Quaid. Uncle, yeah, Randy Quaid is in it. Okay. And it's all these like circus freaks, like this cow guy with a cow head, and like it's just like cult movie. Alex Winter directed, or my buddy Tom Stern directed, and Alex Winter's in it, mm-hmm. oh. and. He's like best friends with Alex Winter, and he's like one of the greatest fucking guys ever. I hope the the third Bill and Ted happens just yeah. for the fact. I know, I know, I'm tired of remakes too and unnecessary sequels, but I do want to see Alex Winter act again. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I think he's fun. great. And to see to see Keanu fall back into that role would yeah. be pretty cool. To so see him do weird. comedy again would yeah. be so weird. Yeah. Those After movies are good too. Yeah. I love Bogus Journey. It's so good. It's like ridiculous. The hell and the soundtrack of Bogus Journey. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. George Carlin. Mm-hmm. Oh, fucking Station. Station. Wild Station. Fucking Evil Bill and Ted, and then mm-hmm. Ghost Bill and Ted. Mm-hmm. Oh, that stuff's awesome.
awesome. Yeah. My buddy went as Ghost Bill and Ted with his friend for Halloween, and they colored themselves all black and white. Oh, really kick cool. ass. The Reaper, he's so good. Yeah. The Reaper, you may be something or a street sweeper, but sooner or later you dance with the Reaper. <laughs> and the Reaper is, what's his name? Is um, The guy from Shawshank guy Redemption. guy from Shawshank. I forget his name, character Which, actor. Yeah. Wait, the old guy? No, he's the friend that Brooks puts the knife to his neck. And he's also in the mist, and he's in, a, yeah, he's in like yeah. every, every Frank Darabont, Frank Darabont movie. movie. Got yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, one of I still think one of the greatest bits of film comedy. Frank Langella? Frank, Frank Langella? No, no, no. He, Frank Langella. He's Langella's. not in Shawshank Redemption. No, ah, fuck. I yeah, I forgot his, his name. name. But one, in my opinion, one of the greatest bits of film comedy ever is from Bill and Ted One is the sequence where they're like. Oh no, we'll just we'll remember to do it later. Oh, right. oh back yeah. Time and do it yeah. later. No way, Bill and Ted has one of the best m music montages in any movie ever. Mm -hmm. It's when they're in the mall yeah. and all the fucking historical guys are just running just around. The mall. Yeah, and Joan and of Arc's doing song, the aerobics. And it's that song, Do You Want to Play? Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's yeah. fucking, yeah, and it's yeah. like, and it's By like extreme? Beethoven. On, yeah. yeah, extreme. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 he's made like 70. And then Genghis Khan's in the store. Have you ever seen Air Guitar Nation? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he it's fucking wins with that. Oh, man, we just nerded out so hard for you yes, guys. Yes, we yeah. did. Sorry. I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Steve Zaragoza. I'm Matt Lieberman. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just yeah. abrupt.